Now, I want to start off with a by in, by just letting you all know some of the things. Some of you who are already aware uh, with the the prophetic ministry. I'm Tommy Rimey. I'm an Issachar prophet. I believe in times and seasons fundamentally. I believe in restoring the integrity of the prophetic, that the prophetic is necessary for today, that the prophetic is the foundation of the Pentecost church, that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Of course, I believe in Jesus Christ because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I am absolutely against cessationism and I love the gifts of the spirit because they're so needed and vital for today. Those of you who have followed us for many years uh, have probably likely followed us, it's safe to assume, because of the prophetic credibility of the ministry that just like the Bible says the Lord was with Samuel, and let none of his words fall to the ground, uh, th that you can trust that there's a proven track record with this ministry that, that you want to continue to listen, to get refreshed on what the Lord is saying. Why prophecy? Why prophecy? It, it's a very vital question. Somebody, a pastor actually asked me this question, why prophecy? Uh, why do we why do we need prophecy? What do people get out of prophecy? It's in Daniel chapter 4 and verse 17. The Bible says, the decision is announced by the messengers. The holy ones declare the, the verdict in order that the living may know that the Most High is watches over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes and sets over them the lowliest of men. So the reason why the prophetic is necessary for today is so that the living will have a God moment because God said it, then it happened. So the living are forced to say, like Nebuchadnezzar, surely God, there is a God who watches over the affairs of men that neither sleeps nor does he slumber. Now let's get straight into the word. Are we at the precipice of World War III? Well, let me tell you what I saw in the spirit and then what I heard. Well, I saw, like all of you, the news where Bibi Netanyahu declared war with uh, 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 Palestine, uh, with Hamas, Iran, where, whichever you want to say it, I saw where he made that declaration. Now, in the spirit, I heard the Lord say these words to me this morning, declare war has begun. It was almost as if we've crossed into World War III and nobody knows it's happened. Let me explain what that looks like as a biblical illustration. If you remember in the book of Acts, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the announcement of the day of the birthing of the New Testament church was birthed, just so happened to be birthed on a day called Pentecost. The New Testament church was birthed on a day called Pentecost. And so today we run with the common conception that we are Pentecostals, not realizing that that explanation, that day just so happened to be the day of the birthing of the New Testament church. And it took a prophet, an apostle standing in the office of a prophet to stand up and say, we're not drunk as you presume, we're not Pentecostals as you assume, this is that which Joel foretold that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. In other words, it took a prophet to define the day. It took a prophet to say, this is that. This is, unless what would happen was the people would go into a place where they would begin to think that maybe this is Pentecostalism, maybe these are drunk men, this is more than Pentecostalism, this is more than drunk men, a prophet had to announce this is a declaration of a new epoch of time. I heard so clearly in the spirit, prepare for war, prepare for war. It was, it was so clear, it was a resounding word in my spirit, we have now crossed into the era of the wars. And I gave this prophecy three years ago. Some of you have gone back and looked at it. I saw the uptick in that prophetic message uh, about how we've got to pray, Netanyahu will be shaken, 
and then there'll be an intensified Iran. So when Hamas came to the forefront, the Lord told me that's not Hamas. The Lord told me that's uh, Iran disguised as Hamas. And then I said, this is going to be reported in newspapers. 24 hours later, it came out in the newspapers. Why not? So Tony can be a great prophet. No. So the living may know that the Most High is watching. The whole purpose of prophecy, so that you watching right now will know, the Lord is watching over the affairs of men. He's speaking in the affairs of men. Well, what's he saying right now, and how do we prepare for it? I believe this is that, okay? I believe we're in another this is that moment that can be found in the scripture. It can be found in the word of God. And if you stick with me to the end, I have something I want to give to you as a, as a gift, a free gift from me just to say thank you. I always give stuff to you to say thank you for tuning in. But if you stick with me to the end, you'll get that free gift. Zechariah chapter 14, the Bible says in verse one, behold, a day of the Lord is coming when your plunder will be divided in your presence. For I will gather all the nations for battle against Jerusalem, and the city will be captured, the houses will be looted, the woman ravished, half of the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be removed from the city. There seems to be a culmination of nations right now gathering themselves against Israel. And if you remember my last prophetic video, if you don't remember it, this is just part two of that. So you, after this, I encourage you to go back and watch that. I think it's at almost 100,000 of you have watched that video, but go, go and check it out because I talk about how people are going to appear to be for Israel, but then they're going to kind of change a little bit and you're going to see a little bit of a shift more into a Palestinian support than an Israeli support. Listen, the, the word Palestine is actually a an insult. It's not a nation, it's an insult. So for those of you who like free Palestine, Palestine was an insulting term given to, the, to Jerusalem by a conquering emperor who decided to change the name to Palestine because somewhere in the book of Judges he read how the Philistines would always torment the, the children of God. And so he renamed it in mockery of the Jews, he renamed it Palestine. This is a land that has always belonged to the people of God, the Israeli, the Jewish people from before you and I were ever on the scene. So I'm going to tell you what I believe the church needs to do right now. The, the, the Lord called, and I'm going to read some things the Lord said to me in prayer, because we've got to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but we've also got to hear the Lord for Jerusalem as well. The Lord calls Hamas the tip of the spearhead. It's the tip of the spear. It's not the rest. Others are going to respond. We're seeing Hamas right now, the tip of the spear. We already saw the uncovering of Hamas, the Iran face behind it. We're going to see other nations. I actually believe prophetically we're going to see Iraq. We're going to see, let, let me just, uh, 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 we may even see Morocco. I mean, distant parts of, of the of the of the uh, Arab world are going to begin to respond to this in a different way. I'm actually trying to pull up this this map right now so I could tell you the nations that I saw. I saw uh, Iraq. I saw uh, Yemen, even though they're somewhat defeated. I saw Egypt. I saw different nations. Afghanistan. I saw them gathering around to add their own insult and their own war and their own strategy to this tip of the spearhead that others were going to ensue with their own attacks and try to cripple the nation at this time. Then I saw a season prophetically where I saw uh, uh, Netanyahu uh, shutting not just food, not just water, not just food supply, I saw people genuinely suffering inside the siege. And then I saw others who were pretending and using young children as 
shields and starving kids at PR to say, look what's happening to us. World stage set in. And all of a sudden, what started off as we'll support Israel became a shift again, and people and nations began to shift and support uh, Palestine. I believe right now the Lord is getting ready to impregnate prophets with intercessory fire. There's going to come such a strong prophetic intercessory wind, not just for prophets, prophetic people are going to catch this morning cry, nighttime cry, saying it's time for us to intercede. And from that, there's going to be a release of the word of the Lord. Listen, I know some of you are thinking this is like every other moment Israel's been besieged by Palestine. This will go away in no time. I literally believe this. I saw the enemy running rampant throughout the Middle East because he knew that his time was short. And I saw him just like in the book of Revelation where it says he chased the woman into the desert. I saw him so angry for this holy land to claim this hot spot, strip of land, this territory that he was wrestling over. And I saw in the midst of that, the Lord saying, release the chief angel. And we know that the angel over Jerusalem is the angel Michael. I believe that the, the hand of the Lord is saying, now, if you're releasing that level of angelic presence, well, let me just read your comments. I just want to pause for a second. Somebody said, it's been happening to me. I got confirmation of intercession in my life. Joyce said, intercession. Come on, if any of you are getting that call to intercession, just, just, just type in the comments, intercession, intercession, intercession. You know, it's time to pray. Laurie said, my God. Uh, Anne said, uh, my Lord, yes. Uh, um, George says, yes, high level, accurate intercession. Uh, some of these have been feeling it for weeks, if not months. There is a cry. There is a call to warfare. There's a call to get back into the prayer closet. Listen, i got to say this. So go Israel. So go the world. Let me say it again. So go Israel. So go the world. I really, really believe this. So go Israel so goes the world. And so there are people politically right now operating in a political spirit saying, well, we got to pray for both sides. And I believe that. Do I believe there are Christians, Christian Palestinians? Of course, I believe that. But can I tell you something? I literally saw the words pro-vax, anti-vax, and, and then I saw that being deleted. Then I saw the word uh, 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 Black Lives Matter, white lives matter. Then I saw that getting deleted and it was in sand. And then I saw the words, uh, pro-Israel, pro-Palestine. And I saw argument breaking out, not in the world, in the church. I saw them arguing and fighting over this word and it caused another big dichotomy. And I asked the Lord, why am I seeing this? And the Lord said, this will be that kind of season again, where I will show that there must be divisions among you so that I can know those that are mine from those that belong to another spirit. There will be those who will move in a political spirit to call Israel the occupiers, to call the Jewish people the occupiers. And you'll hear Christians doing this. Can I tell you something? It's called the scripture for a reason. Stick to the script. Stick to what it says. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if I should forget you, let my right hand lose its cunning. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. This is a time for the church not to be political at a time like this, but to choose to pray, pray, pray for the peace of 
Jerusalem. There's something happening. And this is not about a, and I want to tell you right now, this is not prophetic. This is real. I want to tell you right now, this is not about dividing the land equally. We're talking about an enemy like unto the Amalekites that believes that Israel has no right to exist and the Jewish people have no right to live. We're talking about right now, here's what the spirit of God called it, a spirit of genocide. And this is the next thing I'm going to say. People are going to say, this is worse than 9-11. And then people are going to say, this is worse than Hitler. And this will not be hyperbolic. There is an agenda in this war. And, you know, every war has an agenda. There's the wars that have the agenda of oil. And there's the wars that have the agenda of uh special interests, this will be the agenda of the spirit of genocide. And men will begin to say, this is worse than Hitler. This is worse than the times that Hitler tried to kill the Jewish people. It's going to force nations. I was talking with my dear friend, Pastor Miles Rutherford, uh, who's here, by the way, I've got to get you on this, on the program. But this is going to force, it's going to force nations to choose. Whereas before we could be political, pro-vax, anti-vax, pro-this, anti-this, this is going to force nations to choose. Do you want to be a public defender and a private offender, or do you want to make a genuine stand? I even saw America's political debates shifting out of the season of uh, let's talk about uh, health care, medical care, and the war in Ukraine. All eyes were now on Israel. All eyes were now on Palestine. And different nations were coming around. In my last prophetic video, you saw how I, the Lord released that men would say that this was funded somewhat by America. And this is the next thing I'll say. And articles again have come out about, I heard this figure, six billion, which is going to become a lot of a hum and a noise. Six billion of US money was unfrozen to free, uh, uh, I think, five, six, uh, six unlawfully arrested Americans in Palestine. And I actually believe that there is some truth to that. This fight has been funded. This fight has been funded in many ways by uh, President Biden. And uh, uh, I literally see prophetically, I saw people trying to get rid of him. And tomorrow I'm going to share what I saw. I saw two political figures arguing. And I saw people trying to get rid of President Biden because at this point he was too much of a dead weight. Now, in this season, what can the church begin to do? Um, let, me, let me see if I've finished everything I need to say. Oh, yes, here's the final thing I'm going to say. Oh, I'm gonna, I've got to show you this diagram. I've got to show you this diagram. Uh, yeah, 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 I reject all. I don't like uh, cookies. I don't like cookies. Here's this. Look at this. Let me show you. It's kind of small, but maybe I can zoom in. Okay, I can zoom in on that. Look at this. Here is the here is the map right here of uh, let me get that on the camera here. Here's the map right now of of the of Middle East. And I want you to know, whilst I was praying for Jerusalem this morning, the Lord said, "Pray for Saudi Arabia." I'm so sorry, I, I messed that up. The Lord said, "Pray for Saudi Arabia." And uh, I asked the Lord why, and the Spirit of God says. This war centers around not just Israel, it centers around Saudi Arabia. The Lord says, I want to make Saudi Arabia a gateway to the Middle East. And there was something getting ready to happen uh, that caused this war. I literally believe this so strongly. I literally believe this so strongly that the, the, the war that happened just recently all hangs 
on Israel and Saudi Arabia. Three years ago, you'll know, under Trump, we had a peace treaty that only Saudi Arabia was left wanting to adhere to and determine terms of peace. And I had a vision. And in this vision, I saw Saudi Arabia shaking hands with the sons of Abraham to welcome them into their nation. And I saw people protesting. How can you let these pigs upon the Holy Land? They called them pigs. It was so clear to me. How can you let these pigs, these unclean ones, to desecrate the Holy Land? And I saw in this signing, I saw in this signing, in this signature, I saw uh, uh, them tr ch exchanging hands. We will give you oil, but we need your technicians. We need your AI specialists. We need your tech. We need your, your trade secrets. We need you to come and help us build our digital world. Uh, and we will give you oil for that. Now, I want you to look around Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is the biggest financier of oil around the world right now. And I want you to look around them. They're surrounded by Israel's enemies, surrounded by Israel's enemies. You see Yemen, you see Oman, you see Iraq, you see Iran, you see Afghanistan, not so far, you see Lebanon. They're surrounded by enemies. It's almost as if they're saying, I dare you to support Israel. I dare you. And this is a prophetic picture. I want us to pray that the Lord will, just as he's releasing this army, the Lord says, you're going to hear of miracles. The Lord says, you're going to hear I, I even hear the Lord say, you're going to hear the sound of, of ceasefire go out at least three times, just like the cock crow, three times. You're going to hear ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. And they're going to try, the United Nations is going to try and determine terms of peace within the ceasefire, but they're not going to realize, the Lord says, that they are fighting a spiritual battle that cannot be ceased in the natural. It can only be ceased in the spiritual. And the spirit of God says, you are going to begin to pray because the Lord says, I want to make Saudi Arabia a gateway to the gospel in the Arab world. And you're going to see, says the Lord, from the gate of Jerusalem to the gates of Saudi, a ladder and a release of an angelic army and men are going to report miracles of deliverance, miracles of safety, miracles of provision upon the battlefield. For the spirit of God says, I am not just shaking Palestine. The Lord says, I am shaking my own people, says the Lord. And the spirit of God says, I am shaking Tel Aviv and I am shaking the Supreme Court. And the Lord says, I am shaking them on my threshing floor because the spirit of God says, I desire holiness in the holy land. And where my land has become a den of thieves and robbers, the Lord says, I am redeeming a people for myself in the holy land land. Now listen, there's a gateway. I believe it. There's a gateway that the Lord wants to open up. Now let me tell you what I saw finally in the spirit. I saw wolves moving in different parts. I saw wolves in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I saw wolves in different parts of America. I saw, I saw, and I've shared this before, I saw New York on an alert. I saw Washington on an alert. Um, I saw uh, um, different parts of, of, uh, of Florida standing on alert because there were wolves and these wolves were sh uh, uh, shaggy and raggedy looking. They didn't look well kept and they did not have pack leaders. They were isolated wolves 
and they were in different parts of the Middle East. I saw them in Saudi. I saw I saw cars blowing up. I saw uh, uh, um, uh, shopping malls and centers being shut up in different places. I just saw key targets where these lone wolves were being reawoken. And I saw something that had gone to sleep waking up again and raising up its ugly head. And the Lord says, beware of the lone wolf attacks. The spirit of God says, this is a time for prayer and intercessory strategy. Now, I told you, I'm, I'm going to finish by uh, telling you what to do. And I'll hopefully, God willing, if I'm not traveling, be back on tomorrow to tell you a little bit more. But let me tell you uh, the final thing. I really believe that you and I have got to now seek the face of the Lord. The Bible says, as we see the evil day approaching, we're going to encourage ourselves and pray, prayerfully encourage ourselves. We're coming into a day uh, where now we need to know more than ever what to do, what to do. I just see someone commenting. I just saw New York told uh New York told, mayor told them, be careful, there are lone wolves. Wow, thank God, for, thank God for that word. I, I believe we're going to hear this more in different parts of the world. I believe this. Some said, yes, I live in New York, protection over my son. He travels through Manhattan. He's protected in Jesus' name. I, I just believe that we've got to start quoting this scripture. And I've been praying this over my wife while she's asleep and over my kids a thousand will fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near my dwelling. Only with my eyes will I behold the punishment of the wicked. But prophetically, what can we be doing? When the time of the Prince of Persia, the modern day Iran is Persia. It's the same Persia. That Daniel prayed and fasted 21 days to shift the climate and to partner with the angelic hosts. I believe God is calling us to a new level of partnering with his spirit. I believe the Lord is calling us to a new level of prayer and intercession. I just have to believe uh, that now is the time for the body of Christ to rise up in a prayer warfare posture to begin to push back and resist the Prince of Persia. But remember what Daniel prayed first. Forgive me, forgive the sins of my land, forgive the sins of my people, forgive, 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 Lord. And then as you're forgiving, uh, forgive Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is a sinful city. Uh, forgive Tel Aviv, forgive its gay pride, its LGBT uh, uh, infant, uh, fant fant uh, fantasies, forgive, heal, Heal the holiest place in the earth. Heal Jerusalem. Bring us back. Bring back our city. Bring back our people's righteousness. I believe we've got to take a stance. We've got to choose this day. He's still the God of the Jewish people. We've got to pray for the Lord to protect the Jewish people, the people of Israel. Pray for the Palestinians. Pray especially for those of the household of faith, that the Lord will preserve them, that the Lord will protect them. That, that, that innocence, uh, death would be minimized. But finally, here's, here's this. I believe the greatest revival that the West is ever going to see is now upon us. And we're going to see a harvest of souls as we begin to prioritize the nation of Israel. God is going to open a gateway in our churches and we're going to experience the greatest moves of God and revival and the awakening of the ecclesia. Why? Because now there's a common enemy that's forging a spiritual warfare to rise up on the inside of us to pray like never before. If you believe you're part of that army of the Lord, just type army in the comments, army in the comments, type army in the comments, just so I know, activate it. If you're the army, type army in the comments. Uh, it, just just type that uh, right now and, and and we believe that. I believe, you know, there's there's some of you that the Lord will touch your heart to 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 find a way to go there and, and, and cover them and provide humanitarian aid. I believe there's 
on both sides, I actually believe on both sides, and we're going to see uh, the Lord just move in such a pr tremendous way through the church, sending relief. But we're in the time of the awakening of the ecclesia, like never before, God's army is being awoken like never before. Hey, listen, here's, here's where I'm going to give you my free gift now. It's free. There's no catch to it. I want you to, uh, if anybody's ever called you a prophet or you've ever been told that you're a prophetic person and or, or you're like me, you feel things, you hear things, you sense things, but you don't have expression. If that's you, just type it's me in the comments. If that's you, I want you to head over. I'm going to ask uh, even Alicia to post it in the chat and maybe pin it. But I want you to head over to the link in my description. There's a There's a book. I want to get into your hands that I've written. It's going to show you what to do when somebody's like told you you're prophetic, like you've got the gift of prophecy uh, on your life and you just don't know what to do or how to activate it. The, the book is called Somebody Told Me I'm a Prophet, Where Do I Start? Somebody Told Me I'm a Prophet, Where Do I Start? If you've ever asked that question before, uh, well, I hope you'll ask no more by the end of this. Um, and just download that free ebook. We're in such an age of cessationism where people are trying to discredit prophetic voices and tell people that prophets don't exist anymore in the earth today. Um, but the Bible says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh, not some, everybody. The New Testament is God ending the monopoly on the prophetic being held in the hands of an elite few. So all of us should be saying in the comments, it's me. I'm that prophetic one that's being spoken about. I want to share with you, hopefully tomorrow, if not tomorrow, next time we come on live, I want to share with you some things the Lord showed me in a vision. I saw two political figures argue. You don't want to miss what they said in this prophetic encounter that's coming up next. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, thank you, Alicia, for pinning that and helping people get access to that ebook. Uh, please go ahead and get it. It's in the description. It's also in the chat. You cannot miss it. I look forward to seeing you live again tomorrow. God bless you. And thank you so much for sharing. Please like. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and press that little bell to be notified next time we go live. God bless you.